So hopefully I now have your attention and we can kind of get on to it. So here's how this works. 10 steps, 10 little steps. This is the one that everybody wants to skip. Don't do it. You cannot do it. If you want to skip this step, you're never going to get there. The objective here is we have to find out how bad off we are because we have to have a starting point. You can't know if you're getting better or not unless you know where you're starting. So we need to quantify that and we need to be very specific about it. For many of you, it should be very easy. You just sit down, take a little calculator, and you just figure it out. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty simple to do. Not going to take us any time at all. So seriously, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come up with a financial statement that tells us where we stand. And let me tell you, this seems like I'm kidding around, and I'm not. These things <coughs> are called personal financial statements. You'll hear a bank, it'll say on a forum, it'll say if you want to borrow some money, one of the things they'll need from you, it'll say they need a PFS. That stands for personal financial statement. Here's an example of what one looks like, and that's one that's posted on Propeller for you to use. You can walk in any bank, and just the person that's greeting people there in the bank, it's hardly exist anymore in banks, go over and say, I'd like to get a personal financial statement for him, please. Sometimes, I'm going to erase this because the tour will come by, as sure as I'm standing here. They're also called, this isn't a joke, it's just, you'll see why it's funny. They're also called personal income statement summaries. So that's why I don't really refer to it that way, because the tour will come by and Granny will stick her head around the corner right now and wonder what's going on. So they're generally called, seriously, personal financial statements. That's what this is an example of up there. And what these personal financial statements do is when you fill them out, you're in essence listing your assets and your liabilities, the things that you own and the things that you owe. And then we look at the difference between the two and we refer to that as our net worth, which is not to be confused, by the way, with your self-worth. So. Is there any possibility that any of you in this room, I don't mean any offense to any of you, we've just met, that any of you might have a negative net worth? You might owe more than you own. Oh, heck yeah. You, know, you don't even have to raise your hand. Just kind of nod and it's like, it's all good. So the truth is there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm serious about this. If you feel bad about this, don't. Because the one investment that I could tell you that is a good investment, we have good debt and bad debt. Good debt is debt that will pay for itself. Bad debt is debt that you're going to have to pay for. Good debt is investing in your education. Good debt's investing in something that's going to increase in value. Bad debt's buying a really, really fancy high-end car and watching it depreciate 15 to 20 percent a year and sell it for half of what you bought it for and to say that you drove around in a, in a fancy car for a while. That might be bad debt. You get the idea. So good debt's going to help us, going to improve us, as your education will. And bad debt means we're just going to have to pay for it and pay for it and pay for it, like uh, credit cards, for example, that I'm sure some of you have encountered. Okay, so the way it's going to work is, once we do this, it's going to give us a starting point. The concept is, let me use my little laser here. If we start down here at some point in time, the concept is we want to start to move in a positive direction. And the reason I like this particular graph is it tells us that sometimes life happens. Life happens in the form of we're doing really good, we're doing what Ron told us to do, and uh-oh, my car craps out on me, and it's going to cost me $500 to get it fixed. And that wasn't my fault. Unfortunately, that's my responsibility. So I had a little oops there. And you're going to recover from that oops and you're going to do it again, and something's going to happen, and you're going to have to pay for it, and that's just the way life works. So don't think you can chart a course straight up. All I would tell you to do is that what some people unfortunately do is they take on additional debt, and they make it worse. And I don't pretend to be the financial guru and expert, but I can tell you one thing that I learned a long time ago, and that's that if you find that you've dug yourself in a hole, what's the first rule? Stop digging. So before you can talk about climbing out of a hole, if you've dug yourself in a hole, whatever you do, stop digging. You know, physicians say, first, do no harm. So do no harm to yourself financially. If you keep adding to your debt, 
you're just going to get worse off. The last one of these that we did about three months ago, students kind of lined up at the end, and I'm hearing the horror stories of getting that prepaid, or excuse me, pre-approved credit card that we decide we're going to go out and buy a lot of audio gear with, because it was there, and we could do it. And that student, unfortunately, made things worse off. He had all the obligations you do, and now an additional 10 grand that he really didn't need to have. So we'll talk about how to, how to get out of this. The concept is, over time, we simply want to put ourselves back on the right track. We know there are going to be hiccups. Don't get discouraged about that at all. We just pick ourselves, dust our, pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and say, okay, got to repair the car. Now let's still figure out how we're going to get that $500 back on top of that. You can't avoid that, so don't think that you can.